Okay, this is the second video in a series about uh, Quartz Composer and how to use it. I'm assuming you've already seen the video that describes how to get Quartz Composer or you've figured that out on your own, and then also the first video which tells you what the interface looks like and describes the different parts. So now what I'm going to talk about really quickly is the, uh, the main thing, which is these patches and how we connect them to each other. The, so here we are at, at a kind of a blank composition. It just has the clear uh, patch, and I'll talk about that in a second, but if I can just go to um, this setup that I've already configured here to, to explain something to you. There are different types of patches, and we've already talked about how you get access to them. You just go to the patch library and choose one. But if I just uh, if I start choosing from here, let's say I search for uh, billboard, there's uh, that looks a certain way, and if I search for, uh, let's say, mouse, uh, that looks different, and uh, different still would be something like maybe a uh, mathematical expression. So they look different, um, and right now the main differences are this one is purple, <laughs> this one is uh, black, and this one is blue. But also you can see um, you can see that uh, this one has mostly uh, buttons, or, or these are called uh, ports. It has ports on the left where this one has ports on both sides, and often these purple ones will only have ports on the right side. So uh, the reason for all of this, and, and also we'll talk about this number in, in the uh, blue ones. So the reason for all of this is because <clears throat> there are three different kinds of patches, basically. The, these purple ones we would call providers. They take some information from outside of Quartz Composer, sometimes even outside of Mac OS, for example, uh, mouse, keyboard, video input. These are kind of like hardware devices, but um, it could also be other stuff from on this computer from outside of Quartz Composer. MIDI uh, information from a uh, from another application like GarageBand, for example. Uh, those are providers, and uh, they work basically. Um, the way they work is that they're receiving that information and providing it uh, as it comes in. Processors work slightly differently. They typically take information in, in this example, and in the form of a number, and then they give information back. So uh, each of these ports on the left side are inputs and the ports on the right side are outputs. That's true for all of these different types of patches. So you can see that the number format or patch probably takes a number and if we hover over that port we can actually see that the type is number. Uh, the default value is zero right now. We could change that of course and I'll show you how in a second. But uh, the important thing to know is that it takes a number and then it outputs a string. And if you know anything about programming, then you recognize this name string as a type. It's basically just kind of like a, like a sentence or a string of letters or characters. So um, yeah, I can tell you what this thing does, uh, but you can also kind of hover over it and it gives you a good description of what it does. So basically it kind of, uh, you can put commas or decimal places and so on, format a number into something that looks better um, maybe for uh, showing up as text on the screen. So um, <clears throat> processors, the way they work, the timing is slightly different than a provider, which works in response to whatever's happening. For example, a uh, keyboard. If I press a key on the keyboard, all of a sudden this patch becomes active and does something. Right? And so if I look at the uh, port here, this is of type Boolean, which again, if you know anything about programming, that means that the value is either going to be true or false. So right now it's false because I'm not hitting the up arrow, but if I hit the up arrow, oops, uh, if I went over here and hit the up arrow, we can't see it at the same time, it's unfortunate, but uh, if I were hovering over this, you would see that that value would change to uh, true. So um, those are, uh, it's providing some outputs, those are providers. Processors take some information in and output uh, some, some other information. Uh, the way the timing is different, as I said, so this is based on, in this example, when, when something occurs. Uh, f with the keyboard or the mouse or so on. The processors are either constantly working, for example, a wave generator is constantly producing numbers that uh, end up looking like a waveform, and I can explain that soon. Uh, but the image dimensions, actually, uh, the timing is slightly different. Why does it have to constantly be calculating the width and height of an image? It only changes, uh, it only does any work when the image uh, input 
changes. So if I switch to another image, all of a sudden the width and height get calculated again. This sounds like really specific details, but it's important to understand that the timing for each of these different types is really what differentiates them. So uh, processors work in one of two ways. They're either constantly working in, in this example, or they're, <clears throat> they're working when one of the inputs changes. And then finally, consumers consumers render so they actually are uh, they do the job of rendering things onto the canvas here clear for example clears the background color uh, billboard allows you to place an image or a movie and sprite does something similar so uh, these are um, actually rendering to the output device which is uh, the screen in this case and um, they generally take in take in uh, things from processors and providers. So I could connect a video input directly to this billboard's image input. They both are looking for this. This provides uh, something of type image and this accepts something of type image, so they work. Uh, if I try and connect it to something that is not accepting an image, then you can see it doesn't turn yellow and when I let go, it disappears. So a, a width, for example, is looking for a number. It's so very nice. It, it doesn't allow you to make those kinds of mistakes that you might make in a regular old programming language. Um, so uh, that's basically all you need to know about the three different types. Uh, the last thing is that consumers, which actually render to, screen, to the screen, have, um, have a number in the corner. And that's which layer it's outputting on. And this is just like Photoshop or anything else. If I have uh, five billboards, one of them displays a cat, the other one displays an airplane, and uh, okay, there are three. I don't want to think of five things. Uh, the third one displays a car. Uh, they will show up on top of each other in uh, different arrangements depending on what their layers are. So this is basically uh, allowing us to rearrange the layers, that number in the upper corner. That should be familiar to most people who've ever used Photoshop or Illustrator or anything. So. Um, now if we talk about how we actually uh, use these nodes, these uh, patches, here is a clear patch which actually is clearing the background. And um, yeah, you know what, let's talk about how to actually make connections in another video. But right now what we do need to know is that all of these ports are, uh, we could hover over them to see what kind of information they are um, either accepting or providing. And in this case it's a color. Um, I can either double click on one of these ports to make a change to that port, or I can click the patch inspector, and you see these are the si this is the same information just in a window of its own. So I can enable and disable here. I can change the clear color here. And, um, and if we look now, we will see when we hover over this that the clear color is pink. Uh, we can also do it a third way, which is to, to use the uh, parameters panel. So when I click on a patch, it actually shows its inputs here. What's the difference? Well, honestly, you do all three of those at different times, and uh, they are all showing you the same information. The only difference is if you click on one of these, get rid of that window, and I, I don't generally use this, but it's, it's useful sometimes. Uh, what you'll use most frequently is probably the patch inspector. And when we're in the patch inspector, there is an added benefit here in that you can choose a, the settings panel. And now there's more information available. So for example, if I look, look at uh, the keyboard patch, when I choose the patch inspector, it, it doesn't show anything here because there are no input parameters. There's nothing on the left. That's what, uh, that's what the patch inspector allows you to do is modify the inputs. Uh, but if you click on this and choose settings, now you can see there's actually some settings here. Well, of course, we should be able to accept more than just up, right, left, down, and this is how you do it in the settings panel. So I can hit the letter T, and now it adds another output, which allows me to watch for someone pressing the T key. And you can see right there in the description, this is true if the key T is down, otherwise it's false. That's basically how we use all of these uh, patches, and in the next video I'll show you how to put these together in a meaningful way.